In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the change of base property and the natural log LN. That's how we abbreviate the natural log. So let's explore this change of base property that I'm going to show you. The directions say to solve the following exponential equation using logs. How do I do that? When I have a variable that's in the exponent, one of the things I can always do is take the log of both sides. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So log to the, x to, to the power of x equals log of 12. If I rewrite this using my properties of logarithms, I can move that x out in front. So x times the log of 2 equals the log of 12. And if I'm solving this, I'm solving for the variable. That's x times the log of 2. How would I get x all by itself? I would divide by the log of 2. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. And now I have x equals the log of 12 divided by the log of 2. Go ahead and pause the video and use your calculator and plug this in and see what you get. When you round three places out, x equals x is approximately, you can do it like that if you want, 3.5. Eight, five. Okay, that's how you would do that. So let's look at the other side over here. I actually have the same exponential equation, but the directions tell me to rewrite the exponential equation in logarithmic form. Okay, so you know how I like to do my little um, counterclockwise thing. Log base 2 of 12 equals x. Okay, log base 2 of 12 equals x. This right here and this right here, that is your change of base formula. That is how we get that. I can put the argument, the log of the argument, and I can divide it by the log of the base. If you wanna use your calculator, if you have a TI-84 or higher, you can do alpha window five, and that'll just enter it in, like you can enter, it in, enter in the base and the argument. So let's move on. The ba change of base property, tells me that if I have log base of A of B, I can take that log B, the bigger, right, and divide it by the log of A. So that's the log of the argument is what it's called, divided by the log of the base. So what I just showed you was how we get to the change of base property. And we're gonna use that right here in these examples. It says find log base 4 of 85 using change of base. So if I'm going to take log base 4 of 85, well, that's going to be, I'm going to take the log of 85, and I'm going to divide it by the log of 4. And I will get, go ahead and use your calculator, plug it in, log of 85 divided by log of 4. And if you want to pause the video, you can. You get 3.205. Let's look at number two. This says find x if log base x of eight equals one half. Okay, well, if I rewrite this as such, as an exponential, that means x to the power of one half equals eight. Okay, how would I get x all by itself? I can square both sides, so let's do that. Let's square both sides to get rid of the exponent. And I'm just going to write that down so I have these little reminders in my notes. If I square this side, 2 times 1 half, I'll get 1. Right? What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I get x equals 64. And if you do, um, let's see. So we'll square both sides. x equals 64. And that's our answer. And we're going to leave it as that. Let's move on. And let's look at the natural logarithm, okay, ln, that's how we abbreviate it. So we've worked a little with the natural base e. The number e is known as the natural number, right? We've already looked at the natural number. We've done compound interest that's been compounded continuously. Its value is approximately 2.718281828 dot, 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 because it's irrational which means it never ends and it never repeats. E's sidekick is the natural logarithm. The natural log 
is a logarithm with a base of E and is abbreviated LN. Okay, that's a natural logarithm. So this is what it means. The natural log of X is basically like saying the log base E of X, right? So I don't have to write log base E of X. I can just write the natural log of X. So let's use your calculator to kind of explore this. Type in your calculator, the natural log of 24. Go ahead and pause the video and do that now. You should have gotten 3.178. And now if you type in log base E of 24, that's the same thing as log of 24 divided by log of E, and you will get 3.178. So something I should show you is your change of base. Um, you know, if you have the log base A of B, that's the same as log of B over the log of A, natural log of B over the natural log of A, right? So the properties of logarithms apply to natural logarithms as well. So everything that you've learned about logarithms will apply to the natural logarithm as well. So if you're ever confused when you see L n just think of what it would be like if it said log right so in this first part it says um, log base b of b to the power of x equals x and that's the same thing as b to the power of x it's identity property right so or the inverse i'm sorry property so if i were to rewrite this as a as an exponential equation an exponential form it would be b to the power of x equals b to the power of x and that's how i get that so right here remember the natural log of e that's like having a base of e right that's like saying log base e of e to the power of x equals x so if i were to rewrite that that is like saying e to the power of x equals e to the power of x so what happens in this situation when you have a natural log and an E right next to each other, they cancel each other out. If I move on to where I have an exponential form and I have a logarithm where a natural log is the exponent, if I were to rewrite that in logarithmic form, for example, log base B of X equals log base B of X, right? I've got that right there. If I were to rewrite the next one in uh, logarithmic form log base e of 15 right so log base e of 15 well that's like saying the natural log of 15 equals the natural log of 15 so let's use this property that I just showed you showed you to simplify each expression using the properties of logarithms and I'm just gonna breeze right through these because I'm gonna show you what ends up happening so in example number three, the natural log of e to the power of 5x, those cancel each other out, and you're just left with 5x. Right here, if I were to e to the power of 3 times the natural log of x, well, this is a, a property of logarithms, right? If I have 3 times the natural log of x, well, what, I, what can I do? I can take that and I can put it as an exponent, right? So what happens now when I have a base raised to the raised to a power that has a natural log in it? Those cancel and I'm left with x cubed. Moving on, same thing on number five. What do you think is going to happen? E and the natural log cancel each other out. I'm left with 2x minus 1. But what if I have e to the power of 0? This is kind of a tricky one, right? The natural log of e to the power of 0. Well, if I rewrote that... That would be like 0 times the natural log of e. The natural log of e cancels each other out. I'm left with just 0, right? 0 times anything is going to be 0. In number 7, the natural log and e, those cancel, and I'm left with 4x. What happens here on number 8? e to the power of, I have an exponent, I have e as a base, and I have a natural log in my exponent so the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite this as the natural log of x minus 1 squared e and the natural log cancel each other out I'm left with x minus 1 squared and that is my answer let's move on 
to expanding and condensing natural logs. So hopefully this is coming fairly natural to you, naturally to you, if you remember your properties of logs and you were, you know, fairly good with it when we did this with just logs, not natural logs. But all the same properties exist. So if I have on example number nine, I'm going to expand this, right? So I have the natural log of x cubed over y. All of that is raised to the power of three. The first thing I'm going to do is actually um, use my properties of exponents to distribute this power into each of those variables. So I'm going to rewrite it as the natural log of x to the power of nine over y to the power of three, right? I'm going to use that um, power property. So now what I'm going to do is break it apart. I'm expanding it. I've got the natural log of x to the power of nine minus the natural log of y cubed, right? If it's in my numerator, I have a plus sign in front. If it's in the denominator, I'm going to have a minus sign in front of the term. So minus the natural log of y cubed. Now I can do one more thing. I can take those exponents and put it out in front. So instead of the natural log of x to the ninth, it's going to be nine times the natural log of x minus three times the natural log of y. Now let's move on to example number 10, where I actually have to take that and go in the reverse order. I'm just going to condense it. So I have 8 times the natural log of A plus 5 times the natural log of B. Well, if I just start in the most basic process, I'm going to take that 8 and those, that 5, and I'm going to put it as an exponent to those variables. So that's going to be the natural log of A to the power of 8 plus B, I'm sorry, the natural log, I'm going to have to erase this now, uh, the natural log, let me erase that too, the natural log of b to the power of 5. And now remember, if I have like logarithms with the same base, that's how I'm able to do this. Well, if they're both natural logarithms, I obviously have the same base, right? The base is e. So I can absolutely use these properties to condense this. That's the same thing as the natural log of a to the power of 8 times b to the power of 5. And that's my answer. Let's move on to solving equations. So now if we're solving equations with natural logs, if I have a variable that is an exponent, I can take the logarithm of both sides. If e is a base, I can take the natural log of both sides. So this is going to be the natural log of e to the power of 4x equals the natural log of 8, right? What I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Okay, so let's start like in our basic, like what do we know is going on? I know that if I have a natural log and an e next to each other, boom, those cancel. I'm left with 4x on the left equals the natural log of 8. The ultimate goal when you're solving an equation is to get the variable all by itself. What do I have to do? I have to divide by 4. So x equals the natural log of 8 divided by 4. Go ahead and pause the video. Plug it into your calculator, the natural log of 4. And you should get 0 0.52. And that is your answer. Let's move on to number 12. So in example number 12, I have e as a base. I have an, a variable that is in the exponent. I want to find out what that is. What do I do? I take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of e to the power of x plus 2 equals the natural log of 12. The natural log and e cancel each other out. I'm left with x plus 2 equals the natural log of 12. So what do I do at this point to get x all by itself? And I'm, I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So when I do that, I'm going to take the natural log of 12 I'm going to find that first, and then I'm going to subtract 2. Go ahead and pause the video and do that now. You should get x equals 0 0.485. Let's move on to example number 13. In example number 13, this is a good example to show you that the e part of our equation is not all by itself on one side of the equal sign. And so I actually need to get that part of the expression all by itself. So what do I need to do? I need to divide both sides by negative 4 to get rid of that negative 4. Now I have e to the power of negative x plus 2 equals positive 8. 
And now I can take the natural log of both sides. The natural log of e to the power of negative x plus 2 equals the natural log of 8. So go ahead and pause this video and see if you can work your way through this problem to get x all by itself. All right, so I know the natural log and e are going to cancel, and I'm left with negative x plus 2 equals the natural log of 8. So what am I going to do at this point? I'm going to subtract both sides by 2. So I'm going to take this natural log of 8, I'm going to subtract 2, and I'm going to get negative x equals the natural, I'm going to do that, negative x equals the natural log of 8 minus 2, and then I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1, right? So I'm going to get negative 1, negative 1, and I get x equals negative 0 0.079. And that's what you should get. Negative 0 0.079. Okay, let's move on. So we're, let's do a quick recap, okay? So I have like some words over here on the left, and then I have logarithmic stuff on here, and natural logarithm stuff, and kind of this, um, I guess there's not really a column. But anyways, so logs versus natural logs. When a logarithm is written without a base, the base is assumed to be 10. When a natural log is written, the base is assumed to be E. So right here, you have a base that equals 10, right? Log of 45, unless it's specified that base is 10. Right here, the base is E. That's all that's saying, okay? Expressions. All properties of logarithms apply to natural logarithms as well. Therefore, we can expand and condense them the same way. Condense, you might also see simplify. So right here, log base 3 of x squared times y to the fourth, that's the same thing as 2 times the log base 3 of x plus 4 times the log base 3 of y. If I had a natural log out in front, it would be 2 times the natural log of x plus 4 times the natural log of y. So you can expand and condense in, this, in the same way. When you're solving equations, ex exponential equations in this case, that's when your variable is in the exponent. The first thing you're always going to try to do is create expressions on both sides with the same base. Then eliminate the bases and set the exponents equal. So, for example, 8 and 4, I can create expressions with the same base. 8 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3. And 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. So now I've created expressions with the same base but I need to simplify um, their exponent. So I've got a three, I'm gonna use the power rule and I'm gonna do three times two X and three times five, I'm gonna distribute that into that expression. So I'm gonna get two to the power of six X plus 15 equals two squared. Now when I have bases that are the same, I can cross those out, set the exponents equal to, Z, equal to each other, and then you solve for X, right? So then solve for x. And then if you can't create expressions with the same base, and that is completely okay, you can't find a common base, you're going to take the log of both sides. If e is in the equation, you're going to take the natural log of both sides. So what will this look like? Here's some examples right here, right? 7 to the power of x plus 1 equals 15. I'm going to do the log of 7 to the power of x plus 1 equals the log of 15. That's how I'm going to start solving that equation, right? If I have an e as a base, I'm going to take the natural log of e to the power of x plus 1 equals the natural log of 15, right? But it doesn't matter because if what I do to one side, if I do it to the other side, you're never wrong, right? It's, it's your equation is balanced and that's okay. That's how you start. So that concludes your notes over your change of base property and the natural log. I hope it was helpful.